marked an anonymous point. Above a field, past the A road, the way begins in false quiet. Where the white noise of mechanization, of acceleration and shifting gears, mixes into the wind hum of grass and squeak of starling. The road blends too. Paving becomes stone. Stone becomes stubble. Stubble becomes soil and grass. And soon, before you know it, before you're really ready, grass becomes chalk. On my first visit to England, Winnie and I walked to Shanktonbury. We passed through the hollowway of Mouse Lane, a road for 500 years under this name alone, its walls of root-strewn earth towering either side. As we turned up the side of the downs and climbed along the path, the canopy obscured the views until we emerged at the crest and looked out onto the ring, the old road spiraling beyond. Self. Pragmatist and pessimist, she usually erred on the side of not. I loved her then and love her still, loved her always iffy weather forecasts, and her habit of removing family photos to ensure her children were spared the burden of adoration, the embarrassment of failure. I love her because I could see that other self the one that spewed folk tales like magic spells to let us rise above the damnable reality of Earth and see something more, the one that let us believe. As we walked the path along the ridge of the downs to Shanktonbury, my grandmother told me of its creation. A few miles east of the ring lies Devil's Dyke, a deep, dry coombe cut into the landscape by a river spawned from the disillusion of Ice Age permafrost. The river is gone, the valley remains. That's one story. Winnie told me another. The devil, she said, wished to destroy Sussex and wandered the county in search of occasion. There he encountered St. Dunstan, a wise and wily Sussex man. Being a cocky fellow, Beelzebub gave Dunstan the choice of how his homeland would be destroyed. Dunstan proposed that the county be flooded. But how to do it? After all, the Downs protect Sussex, cradle it against encroachment of the sea, and to cut through the hills, that would take ages upon ages, even for the likes of the devil. The bait was taken, and the bet was made. The Downs would be cut through before the cock crowed daybreak, or the devil would leave Sussex alone. Satan dug and cut through the night, well on his way to completing the task, when something happened. My grandmother told me that an old woman was awakened by the ruckus and, investigating with a lantern, climbed over the downs, her light appearing as the dawn and sending an infuriated devil running. Belloc tells the tale too, and in his version, it's the power of prayer, St. Dunstan rising every rooster in the west to crow at once. 
Devil's Dyke remains, as do the mounds of chalky earth he furiously shoveled to and fro, landing across the county, piles at Mount Caber and Rackham Mountain, Ditchling Beacon and Sisbury Ray, and, of course, Shantonbury. The Devil lives on. Winnie told me how running around the ring seven times, Wittershins, would summon him, complete with an ambiguous bowl of soup. That story changes too, the summoned becoming a legion of Roman soldiers or a horde of Saxon berserkers, perhaps merely a twinkling of fairies, a murder of crows, or a clattering of jackdaws. suspended, 
like the kestrel. I looked down at this careful earth, the buds, the birds, the chalk, all newly detailed. It was back, the spirit, like a child in this thinnest of places. from the trees and moved more slowly, more delicately. I noticed the distinct snow-like crunch of scruffy grass beneath my feet, the smokiness of the misty air. Shanktonbury is often portrayed not as sunny, not gloomy, but within a glowing wash of white or sepia or graphite. As morning took hold, I saw that atmosphere approach. It would be day soon, truly day, sunny and burnt and cloudless, recklessly blue. But for now, the morning too was molasses slow. That morning looped all the shankton breeze, shankle breeze, change breeze that had come before. The Morris men had quit their leaps. Sticks leaned once again on beaches ancient and new. A concertina, unstrapped, gently placed atop a black case. They had joined the landscape, joined the loop, and they began to sing. Take us gone to where the horn it was the crest when you were born. Your father's father wore it, and your father wore it too. Heart and soul, Johnny Rumble, we were all long before the day of to welcome in the summer. To sun stretched its rays and broke through. The numbness quit my fingertips. I slipped away. No one knew me. No one noticed me leave, unless Winnie was still watching. I skipped down the hillside along tapering tracks. Summer is coming in and winter's gone away. And like that, the calendar had turned. It was summer.